Hi everyone and thank you for joining us today. My name is Maribel and I am an award specialist for the Industrial Commission of Arizona. I will be presenting the unscheduled permanent disability, also known as loss of earning capacity. The agenda for today is where to find information on scheduled disabilities. What's an unscheduled injury? Actions to take before closing? How to issue an unscheduled closure? ICA's process? LSE awards? And rearrangements. Where to find information on an unscheduled disabilities? In the seminar manual under the tabs are permanent awards, position paper samples, and vocational rehabilitation. What's an unscheduled injury? An unscheduled injury is any injury that is not listed under scheduled ARS 23-1044-B. Unscheduled injuries include head, skull, injuries including brain, mental stress, or PTSD, spine, neck and back, shoulders, hips, any internal injury that impacts the stomach, liver, lungs, heart, or any other internal organ. Cancer, if an employee is a firefighter or in a law enforcement capacity. Occupational disease or an impact from such as HIV, hepatitis C, TB, spinal meningitis, bilateral wrist, arms or knees, legs. The second scheduled injury, two different dates of injury per ARS 23-1065-B. What is an unscheduled injury in Arizona? Any injury to the head or the skull does not include eyes, ears, or teeth. Any injury to the trunk does not include one arm, fingers, or one leg. Occupational disease or effects from HIV, hepatitis C, MRSA, spinal meningitis, TB, COVID, cancer if a firefighter or a law enforcement officer. Any injury to the shoulder does not include any mid-arm, including elbow, fingers, or hand. Any injury to the spine or a hip does not include anything mid-leg, including knee, ankle, feet, or toes. Any two scheduled injuries involving the following body parts but not include the same impairment rating, does not include the loss of hearing or loss of vision. What is an unscheduled injury? An unscheduled injury can also involve two or more separate body parts. For example, two scheduled body parts, same injury, is an unscheduled. One scheduled and one unscheduled body part, same injury, is an unscheduled. Once a claim is unscheduled with an LEC award, they are always unscheduled. All subsequent injuries will be unscheduled no matter body part, date of injury, or employer. Did you know plot twist? If the physician rates multiple parts as the upper extremity, that includes arm, elbow, hand, wrist, fingers, same injury, same arm, right or left, is a scheduled injury. If the physician rates multiple body parts as to the lower extremity, that includes leg, knee, foot, ankle, toes, same injury, same leg, right or left, is an unscheduled injury. What is an unscheduled injury? Must have a permanent impairment assessed by a medical provider according to the most recent edition, currently the sixth of the American Medical Association's Guide to the Evaluation of a Permanent Impairment. Permanent disability benefits are assessed according to the employee's ability to earn money in the open labor market based on work limitations. What is an unscheduled injury? Benefits are paid at 55% of the difference of the average monthly wage and what the claimant can earn in the open labor market. Average monthly wage is $5,161.12. 
subtract 2,500 of the monthly earnings equals $2,661 with 12 cents. $2,661 with 12 cents, multiply that by 55% equals $1,463 with 62 cents. What is an unscheduled injury in Arizona? Monthly benefits are paid for a lifetime or unless the employee's physical condition or earning capacity improves. The employee has a lifetime right to petition to rearrange if their condition or earning capacity worsens. The employer carrier has a lifetime right to a petition to reopen if the employee's condition or earning capacity improves. Unscheduled, second scheduled injury. Employee has a permanent impairment rating, permanent work restrictions, and is unable to return to the pre-employment job status. Issue a 107 with a 1B. Submit documentation of the first scheduled award. Submit a position paper, including a loss of earning capacity evaluation. ICA will issue an award outlining the second scheduled amount and the monthly loss of earning capacity amount. Once all payments for the second scheduled injury have been paid, normal loss of earning capacity benefits begin through lifetime. Reimbursement for 50% of the annual paid LEC amount can be requested from special fund. What is a loss of earning capacity? A loss of earning capacity, a reduction in personal ability to earn an income due to the work-related injury. Types of loss of earning capacity. Types of loss of earning capacity. No loss, an LEC award. A findings and award issued by the commission where the injured worker has not sustained a loss of earning capacity. This most likely occurs when the employee is able to return to their pre-injury position or there are no permanent physical restrictions issued by a medical provider. If in the future the employee's physical condition or earning capacity changes, they have a lifetime right to file a petition to rearrange and the Industrial Commission will reassess their evaluation. Loss of Earning Capacity Findings and Awards. The award issued by the Industrial Commission that outlines their independent assessments as to the injured worker's reduction in income and monthly amount. The LEC will be awarded at 55% of the average monthly wage for life or until further award. Both the injured worker or attorney and the employer or carrier attorney has 90 days to file a protest if they do not agree with the commission's findings. If there is no protest filed within 90 days from the date of the award, it becomes final. Total Loss LEC Award A findings and award issued by the commission when an injured worker is unable to earn anything in an open labor market. This would be awarded at 66 and two thirds of the average monthly wage for life or until further award. A total loss can be due to physical restrictions or where there are no employment opportunities in the geographical area or age not used often. Best practices to determine an unscheduled injury, body part, trunk, internal injury, or a condition, occupational diseases, multiple injuries, two schedules, prior unscheduled, obtain a statement from the employee. Prior employment, even out-of-state injuries can be considered unscheduled. Educational skills, degrees, certificates, and job skills could impact their loss of earning capacity. Other medical conditions, such as diabetes or arthritis. Injury could aggravate pre-existing conditions and impact earning capacity. Obtain priors from the Industrial Commission. Prior claims are available through the ICA Community Portal. Some organizations can also obtain information through the Insurance Services Office. Claim Search Database. Permanent Impairment. Is the impairment reasonable? Need an IME for clarification? 
obtaining priors, all prior injuries must be closed before you issue a 107. This is how you can obtain priors from the ICA Community Portal. Obtaining prior older than 1030 2023, any claim created after the 1030 2023 will have priors reports automatically created that will be in the file. So you won't have to obtain prior reports. Actions to take before closing a claim. Injured employee is medically discharged. Now what? Impairment rating. Does medical provider do permanent impairment ratings? Was rating to whole person even if there were multiple body parts? Physical restrictions. Are work restrictions temporary or permanent? If temporary, for how long? Can the employer accommodate permanent restrictions? If not, can the employer find another position within the company at the same rate of pay, IME, or file review? Some medical providers do not do ratings. Is the rating reasonable given the injury? Are workers' restrictions reasonable given the injury? What is an LEC position paper? It's a report from the labor market consultant which outlines the recommendation of the carrier for a loss of earning capacity. This is optional. There's a position paper tab to reference for samples in the seminar manual. This is a continuation of what an LEC position paper must include. Again, you can refer to your seminar manual if you need help. How to issue an unscheduled closures. What do you need when you issue notices? A medical report or report supporting the closure of the claim with an impairment rating and restrictions. When multiple body parts are included, every body part must be stationary. Do not issue a notice until all body parts are stationary. What do you need when you issue notices? Notices must be issued with the following notices. A 106 which is also the notice of permanent disability or death benefits, or a 107 notices of permanent disability and the request for determination of benefits, or a 103 with the notice of supportive medical maintenance benefits. A 107 cannot be issued before the closing notices. What do you need when you issue notices? Be proactive. Establish wage when permanent benefits are accepted. Establish the wage with the 108, a notice of claim status marking B. Wage must be established for permanent impairment only. Make sure that the average monthly wage is listed under 4B. When you receive all final documents, closing medical reports, position papers, you can close the second notice of claim status marking 6 and 8. What do you need when you issue notices? Discharge date on number 6 cannot be more than 30 days per Rule 18. Under number 11, you can use the actual discharge date, but on number six, you would use 30 days back from your mailed on date. What you need when you issue notices. Form 107. Under number one, unscheduled permanent partial disability, you have A, general unscheduled ratings, or B, prior schedules with the current scheduled, continuance of the 107. C, general unscheduled with a non-industrial condition listed under ARS 23-1065C, or D, apportionment requested for injuries prior to January 1st, 1986. If no box is checked, it will be processed as 1A, general unscheduled. What you need to issue a 107A. Attach all medical reports or report to support the closure. Position papers, if any. For best practice, always issue the notice of claim status before you issue the 107. What you need when you issue a notice marking 1B. Second scheduled injury. No loss of earnings, also known as a rehab bonus. Attach medical report or reports to support the closure and a copy of the prior scheduled claim 
that made this claim unscheduled and a position paper, if any. A continuation on a 1B, second scheduled injury with a loss of earning capacity. He would issue a 107B with your request for a Roth credit. Also attach medical report or reports to support the closure and a copy of a prior scheduled claim that made this claim unscheduled and a, a position paper, if any. Roth credits. The ICA is no longer calculating Roth credits. We are only approving or denying them. A Roth credit video can be found online under the Adjuster Authorization Program on our website, azica.gov. What you need to request a Roth credit. You will need to use a life table, which is found under this website, under pages 9 and 10. This is an example of a Roth credit formula. What you need when you issue a 1C. The carrier can receive 50% of loss of earning capacity benefits annually from special fund, also known as the second injury fund. Reimbursement is only awarded when the employee has a non-industrial pre-existing disability from the list of conditions under ARS 23-1065-C. This pre-existing condition must equal to 10% or greater permanent disability per the AMA guidelines. Employer must have knowledge of this pre-existing condition at the time of hire or at some point during the employment. This acknowledgement must occur prior to the current injury. Attached information on the employer acknowledgement and medical documentations on the 10% pre-existing condition. If findings an award has a lifetime right to petition to rearrange by the claimant and their attorney or the carrier and their attorney. When a loss of earning capacity increases or decreases, or if a physical condition has worsened than the previous award. Remember, all the information we viewed can be found in our seminar manual. Thank you for joining us. If you have any questions, call 602-542-4661.